students after completing the methods of preparation of ether let's start with chemical properties of ethers ethers are least reactive of all functional groups therefore their chemical properties are also limited the first chemical property which we have to discuss is its reaction with hydrogen halides hx first of all the order of reactivity of hydrogen halide molecule for ethers is hi greater than hbr is greater than hcl now how the reaction takes place when ethers right now we are discussing the reaction of aliphatic ethers with hydrogen halide here i have taken hydrogen iodide so when ethers reacts with hydrogen halide as you can see here carbon oxygen bond in ether breaks and alkyl halide and alcohol is formed now the question here arises is which carbon oxygen bond in ether breaks because in ethers there are two carbon oxygen bond this one as well as one more carbon oxygen bond is here so whichever carbon oxygen bond in ethers will break will decide the nature of alkyl halide and alcohol molecule the answer of this question will come from the mechanism of this reaction let's see the mechanism when ethers unsymmetrical ethers we are talking about when unsymmetrical ethers reacts with a molecule of hydrogen halide the electrons of hx bond are shifted towards halogen atom due to greater electronegativity of this halogen atom and therefore this hydrogen will be electron deficient oxygen atom of ether due to its lone pair is electron rich therefore will attack on this electron deficient hydrogen atom of hydrogen halide and as you can see here in after the reaction this oxygen atom of ether is now bonded with this hydrogen and now oxygen is carrying a positive charge and this iodide ion is released so this is the first step when ether is converted into protonated ether in the next step now this oxygen atom of ether will attract the electron pair of both the co bonds this co bond as well as this co bond towards itself and the deficiency now will be on these carbon atoms now this iodide ion which is released in the first step is electron rich therefore a good nucleophile it has affinity for electron deficient centers now there are both the carbon atoms in ethers are electron deficient to which carbon atom will this iodide ion or halide ion attack that carbon atom in ethers which is sterically less hinder means which in space is less crowded will be attacked by this iodide ion because it will be easier for the halide ion to approach that carbon atom which is sterically less hinder in this case as you can see one group is methyl one group is ethyl methyl carbon atom is sterically less hinder so iodide ion will attract this carbon atom and in this reaction the formation of bond takes place between this halide ion and this carbon atom simultaneously the carbon oxygen bond starts breaking that means the form formation process and the bond breaking process takes place simultaneously that means a transition state will be reached how we will show the transition state like this this is the bond between carbon and iodide ion which is in the formation process and this is the bond between carbon and oxygen which is in the process of breakage so this is the transition state when the final state will come this bond will be completely formed and alkyl iodide will be formed here it will be methyl iodide and this bond will be completely broken and alcohol molecule here in this case ethyl alcohol will be formed so this is 
how the reaction is taking place between unsymmetrical ethers and hydrogen halides. Now, when this reaction takes place in excess of hydrogen halide, then the alcohol molecule which is formed, that alcohol further reacts with hydrogen halide. And see how this reaction takes place now. Again, these electrons of this bond are shifted towards halogen atom. Hydrogen being electron deficient, oxygen atom of now alcohol molecule will attract to this uh, hydrogen, that means proton, and CH3, CH2, this OH and 1H of this HI molecule will bind and protonated alcohol will be formed along with the release of iodide ion. Now, on this protonated alcohol, the electron pair of this bond are shifted towards this oxygen. This bond will break. This carbon will carry a positive charge and this iodide ion will attack on this carbon atom. And again, you can see a molecule of alkyl iodide is formed along with the release of water molecule. That means when the reaction of ether is taking place in excess of HI, then First, alkyl halide and alcohol is getting formed. Alcohol is further reacting with HX, HI and again alkyl halide is formed. So, the only product in this type of reaction where HX is in excess is alkyl halide. And if it is limited, then alkyl halide as well as alcohol till second step which we have seen, it will be till that step. This is how the reaction is taking place. That means when ether is reacting with hydrogen halide, the mechanism which is followed is SN2 mechanism. That means nucleophilic substitution by molecular reaction as the attacking species is a nucleophile, substitution is taking place and the rate of reaction is depending on concentration of both the reactants that is ether and hydrogen halide. But this is the mechanism when the alkyl group in ether is either primary or secondary. But when one of the alkyl group attached with ether is a tertiary alkyl group, then the reaction of that ether with hydrogen halide follows SN1 mechanism. That is nucleophilic substitution unimolecular reaction. Let's see how the mechanism takes place. First step is exactly same. A molecule of ether reacting with a molecule of hydrogen iodide bonds of uh, electrons of this bond shifting towards halogen atom hydrogen electron deficient oxygen of ether attacking on this electron deficient hydrogen and a protonated ether is getting formed along with the release of halide ion same as it was taking place earlier but now this protonated ether in which as you can see here one of the alkyl group is a tertiary alkyl group here it is a tertiary butyl group now the attack of iodide on the electron deficient carbon atom and the cleavage of carbon oxygen bond does not takes place simultaneously first carbon oxygen bond is completely broken now, because after the breakage of a carbon-oxygen bond, carbon atom will acquire a complete positive charge forming a carbonium ion. Now, we know that since the stability of tertiary carbonium ion is maximum, therefore, that carbon-oxygen bond in ether will break which will generate a tertiary carbonium ion if the alkyl group is a tertiary alkyl group. Here in this case, this bond will break and you can see a tertiary carbonium ion is getting formed and the other alkyl group, because this bond is getting broken, other alkyl group is forming a molecule of alcohol. Now, this tertiary carbonium ion is formed and this step you can see is the slow step, therefore rate determining step. Now, in the next step, now there is attack of 
the halide ion which is a nucleophile on this electron deficient carbon of tertiary carbonium ion and tertiary alkyl halide is getting formed that means here the co bond breakage and carbon halogen bond formation is not taking place simultaneously first bond breaking process is taking place which leads to that carbon oxygen bond uh, breaking which is forming a more stable tertiary carbonium ion that means summarized way we can say if one of the alkyl group in ether is a tertiary alkyl group tertiary alkyl group will always form its halide and the remaining alkyl group will form alcohol and the mechanism with hx of tertiary alkyl group containing ether follows SN1 pathway.